guys, a lot of people have been asking my thoughts and opinions on performance enhancing drugs in boxing, uh, especially related to the recent news that Wilder vs Povetkin has been called off. So I'm going to talk about the topic, it's probably going to be a more long winded video, a bit of a rambling one, but uh, here we go. Um, I'm going to start with a bit of a personal experience. Um, I went to uni in 2008 and I left university in 2011. So several years ago, uh, but I was there for a period of, of three years, and let me say, when I started at university, uh, I was lifting a lot of weights, you know, I was very into trying to get bigger, trying to put on muscle mass, uh, trying to do the whole gym thing, uh, I haven't done that recently, you know, I've been more focused on things like my career, YouTube, do a lot of long distance running, which is kind of works against putting on muscle, but yeah, back in the day I was lifting a lot of weights and I was probably a lot bigger than I am now. Uh, you know, I was never a massive guy but I was certainly 210 pounds at my, um, you know, when I was lifting a lot of weights and probably a bit leaner than I am now as well. Uh, and when I started doing it, I was someone who kind of scoffed at guys who took protein and creatine and those sort of stuff. I always thought it was a bit sad and a bit sort of... Um, a bit of a loser thing to do if I'm completely honest, you know, I thought it was a sign of big vanity and that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, when I got into uni and when I started in a circle of friends who were all lifting weights and all going to the gym, I personally found it becomes quite consuming. And, you know, within a very short period of time, I was queuing up buying protein powder myself. And for me, it spiralled personally. Uh, I'm glad in hindsight to say I never took anything too strong, you know, uh, a lot of my mates were taking testosterone boosters, forms of steroids, uh, human growth hormone, all of this stuff. And it never spiralled to that for myself. I was always able to keep things in check. But, you know, certainly I started off buying protein powder. Uh, before I knew it, I was buying creatine. Uh, I was buying Thermobol to strip extra fat. I was taking pre-workout stimulants. Um, you know, and, and there you go from a, a regular guy, just an average guy lifting a few weights to a guy taking you know, a cocktail of products, I was taking protein two or three times a day, you know, I was loading up on creatine several times a day, I was taking thermable several times a day, pre-workout, you know, on a daily basis, and, and there you go, it becomes a sort of consuming thing, and it's all around you, and I guarantee if you go to the gym, even if you go to the gym and, um, you know, just run a 5k, or if you go to the gym and do a, a class in the gym, or whatever you do, people on performance enhancing drugs are are all around you and we need to talk performance enhancing drugs at a basic level because you know let's not forget Dillian White for example was banned for taking a, a stimulant that's readily available on the high street you know readily available in health food stops you know this is not performance enhancing drugs where you have to associate yourself with some sort of gangster and do an illicit drug deal performance enhancing drugs are all around you I guarantee you know someone taking a performance enhancing drug uh, you know they're in every gym uh, they're in every walk of life. Uh, people take performance enhancing drugs, and the results are obvious. You know, again, to give a personal example, this video isn't about my former weightlifting prowess, but you know, I'll give you a, a, an example. I remember that at the time I was, as I said, I was a lot bigger than I am now. I was bench pressing 100 kilos, uh, 220 pounds in US money, and I was stuck on it. I couldn't get past that figure. I couldn't get past that figure. I was really stuck on it. And one of my friends recommended that I did a loading phase of creatine. And he said, because I hadn't done it before, I'd get real effects off the back of it. And sure enough, I did a loading phase of creatine. And you know, within a month later, I was able to boost my bench press by 20%. Uh, you know, and that's coming as a regular guy, not an athlete, not someone who's a world-class sportsman or even a, an average sportsman. Just a sort of run-of-the-mill bloke who gyms a couple of times a week and... And lifts a few weights, you know, the, the effects of these drugs are obvious, they give you a massive boost, um, you know, they change the way your body is functioning, and that is at, as I say, a basic level, that is at someone who was lifting a few light weights at university, uh, and, you know, we see it, it's all around us, I've talked about Dillian White being banned from boxing because of taking a substance available on the high street, uh, let's, let's shift gears, let's talk about Made in Chelsea reality TV sauce, Spencer Matthews, who was removed from the I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here um, reality TV program because the producers found out he was taking a form of steroid. Why was he taking a form of steroid? 
um, because he was looking to bulk up and add strength before a charity boxing match. Now, I think that there tells you all you need to know. I'm not talking pro boxing. I'm not talking amateur boxing. I'm not even talking white collar boxing. I'm talking about a reality TV star doing a charity boxing match. Uh, and he's on steroids. He's juicing up for the fight. Um, you know, I've spoken offline in great detail with uh, my good friend and YouTube channelist, Ultra Tech Sports. And, you know, the more we talked about it, the more I got the impression that these performance enhancing drugs are all around us. They are in every gym, in every walk of life, at every level of the sport. And, you know, the fact that Dillian White's being banned for taking something on the high street, the fact that a Made in Chelsea star is taking them for a charity boxing match, so you just what you need to know about how effective these substances are and how they have infiltrated not just every level of the sport, but every level of life itself. Now, I'm not the sort of guy who comes on YouTube and picks on a particular fighter and say, he's definitely on the juice, he's on steroids, he's a cheat. Um, you know, I wouldn't have the boldness to do that if I'm honest. But what I will say, and I'm not looking for credit after the event, but I certainly said offline to Ultra Tech Sports, if there's one person who... Uh, I think is taking performance enhancing drugs, it's Alexander Povetkin. You know, I look at Povetkin, and Povetkin was always a big puncher, but has nobody noticed that after the Vladimir Klitschko loss, Povetkin suddenly became a monstrous puncher? Don't get me wrong, he always had power, but Mike Perez had never been stopped before. Wasn't he done in a single round by Povetkin? Dukam had never been stopped before, I don't think. Wasn't he knocked out with a single punch by Povetkin? Marius Wok, known as the best chin in heavyweight boxing, suddenly stopped by Povetkin. Um, Manuel Char, I think, knocked out in a round by Povetkin. You know, Povetkin had grown monstrous one-punch knockout power overnight. And with that, his build had changed. You know, he'd always been a sort of heavyweight with a soft build, carrying a bit of flab, a bit of puppy fat, however you want to call it. Suddenly, he became harder, stronger. And literally, the fight after the Vladimir Klitschko fight, we saw a new Povetkin. Uh... Yeah, for me, it was it was deeply suspicious. Um, and whilst I never came out and called it out on the channel, offline I was saying to people, for me, Povetkin is the one to, to watch out for. He really, it really is. And let me say, a lot of people will be, some of the smart asses out there will be commenting, oh, you know nothing about this. And, you know, Povetkin wasn't taking a steroid. He was taking some sort of stimulant. Let me tell you, as I understand it, the substance Povetkin was taking was a substance that allowed you to increase blood flow throughout your veins. A substance that allowed you to basically assist with your recovery. Now, Povetkin is a very big puncher in round one. But if he is able to recover and stay at peak conditioning late on to a fight, of course that's going to increase his power. Of course that's going to increase his speed. It's going to have a knock-on effect. As your opponent is starting to tire, as they're becoming heavier less able to move, less able to defend themselves. If Povetkin has uh, an enhancement to his recovery speed, he's able to hit with the power, the speed, the precision he was earlier on in the fight. It's giving him a massively unfair advantage. Uh, also, these substances are often used as a masking agent. You know, I'm no scientist, but I understand sometimes substances of this ilk, ilk are used to mask other things. So, don't let the hype fool you here. Just because this was a stimulant, just because this was not a steroid, that doesn't mean Povetkin wasn't cheating. Uh, you know, for my money, he was definitely cheating. And a way of enhancing recovery is, for me, just another way of maintaining power, maintaining speed, and maintaining danger late on into a fight. And I think if you're one of Povetkin's former opponents who's been knocked out by Povetkin, who's had your career and your future prospects in boxing damaged by a loss to Povetkin, you certainly have a right to feel aggrieved. For my money, he was out and out cheating. The fact that this substance was able to be used as recently as 2015 shows that we have a huge long way to go in tackling this issue within boxing. You know, this substance was readily used, and Povetkin admits he used it legally up till 2015. You know, for me that shows just how far ahead these cheats are ahead of the testers. Povetkin was using this to gain an advantage, to gain that extra percent as recently as last year, and it took till 2016 for the drug testers to put it on the list and to rule it out. That shows that, you know, there's a long, long way to go and a lot more work to do to clean up this sport. Um, you know, a lot of the Povetkin fans, and I think Povetkin camp as well, has said the reason this drug's appeared in this system is because of legacy use when it was legal. You know, Povetkin was using it in 2015 when it was allowed to be used, and some of it stayed in his system. 
Um, Dan Raphaels came out and said that's absolutely rubbish because uh, Povetkin passed several tests between uh, 2015 and now, you know, in the last few months, which have suggested that there was none of this substance in his body. So I agree with Dan Raphael. I think that's nonsense, and I don't believe Povetkin. Uh, I believe Povetkin purposely took this to give himself an unfair advantage against Deontay Wilder. And I think Deontay Wilder is absolutely categorically right to withdraw from any future fight with Povetkin and not to risk his career, his health and his life against an opponent who has gained an unfair advantage which has seen him develop devastating punching power and uh, other improved attributes since his one career loss. You know, credit to Deontay Wilder for making a sensible decision in saying that this WBC fight isn't postponed, is fully off and won't be being rescheduled. Um, you know, as I say, for me, this tells us just how far we've got to go in boxing to clear out this drug abuse. If, uh, you know, if um, a substance of this nature that was improving red blood flow, uh, you know, improving stamina, improving recovery, improving, you know, all the things associated with that was totally legal as recently as 2015. You know, I think that tells you what you need to know. You know, let's look at the facts. Dillian White has been banned for a substance available on the high street. Reality TV stars are taking steroids to win charity level boxing fights. You know, these performance enhancing drugs are all over. We have a major issue in the sport. The testers have a long way to go to catch up with the cheats. The cheats are winning the war at present. And there are going to be a lot of painful discoveries amongst top level boxers taking these drugs. The sport needs to make a fundamental decision whether it has the, the drive and the ambition to pull performance enhancing drugs out of the game or whether it would rather turn a blind eye. Uh, and I think that's the key thing, because right now, performance-enhancing drugs, I believe, are at every level. I'm convinced you know someone taking them. I'm convinced if you go to the gym whatsoever, you walk past 10 people who's taking them today. Uh, you know, white-collar, amateur, charity, certainly in the pros, they're all over, and it's a real, real issue. Um, they give a genuine, genuine boost, and... You know, it's uh, immensely trouble troubling, not only that Povetkin's been banned, but that what Povetkin was doing was classed as completely legal as recently as 2015. And he has made no attempt to suggest he wasn't taking these drugs. You know, he was taking this stimulant to give himself an advantage. Don't be fooled by the fact he's saying it's legacy issue. Don't be fooled by the fact that this drug was once legal. You know, that highlights just how much of a problem uh, this is. And... The fact that it's not a steroid, the fact that it's not testosterone, um, irrelevant to my money. Povetkin's a drug cheat. Um, the guys who've lost to him have a right to feel wholly aggrieved and let down by the sport that it's been allowed to happen like this. And for me, this needs to be a springboard onto clearing out this problem from our sport. Uh, it's all over. As I say, it's all over the sport. We need to not be naive. It is everywhere in top-level boxing. Let me know your thoughts. Leave your comments below. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe.